Hi lovelies and welcome back to this channel. If you're new here, my name is Belinda Strana. Thank you so much for all the love and support. Don't forget to please subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications so that anytime I upload a video, you'll be the first person to be notified. And to my returning subscribers, to those people that share my videos, leave commentaries and also educate each and every one of us. You guys are the real MVP. All right, lovelies, let's dive in. So, lovelies, I came across this video on my for you page on TikTok, and I thought to share you guys when Asian American woman decided to come for this, you know, extra of a woman who thought it was actually okay for her to compare, you know, people that look like me and other Asian people's piano. Guys, I'm just gonna roll the clip as well as some of other stitches I was able to put together. Please leave me your own thoughts in the comment section of what you think of this video. Please do not forget that we do not support any form of bullying and harassment. We're just here for educational purposes. All right, lovelies, let's dive into it. Yeah. Like, like black men have, you know, don't have large, so yeah. therefore the women have bigger holes. Hi, Esther. Under the Influence podcast, can I see you in my office? Nothing pains me more. Nothing makes me feel more disgusted. Nothing twists my guts around as much as seeing a fellow Asian woman speaking about another person of color like that. I think I'm late on processing all of that because I just, I couldn't bring myself to watch the full clip and I don't know. I think what pisses me off about all of this is like, out of all ethnicities, out of all races, out of all genders, we should know. Asian women know what that feels like. To be objectified like that, to be spoken about in such an explicit manner without anyone's consent is so humiliating. The dehumanization, because that's what you did. You dehumanized all black women. And for what? For why? To make a few men laugh. These are the same men that would speak about you in this explicit manner if you weren't in the room with them. I'm just unsure of what the goal was here. Were you trying to seem funny or trying to seem smart? Because you did neither. Actual funny or intelligent people never feel the need to push anyone else down in order to make themselves seem that way. They just are. We have first-handedly seen the ramifications of what happens when we speak about women of color this way. So if you or any of your buddies saw that clip and thought, ha, oh, that was so funny, hey guys, we should start a podcast, cease. Post heads. I am begging, do not go to Best Buy. Do not get those mics. Okay, so a lot of you guys have been asking me to speak on the Esther situation. Like, I've been seeing your tags. I just wanted to let other creators um talk about it first and i wanted to boost their posts and stuff like that but yes esther is not just a pick me ass bitch she's a racist pick me ass bitch and i i saw this coming i'm sorry i told you no person who sits in a room full of men with mics and lets them say stuff like that is normal and i and i said just imagine the type of dialogues that take place when the cameras aren't there and in the clip she's like oh maybe we have to cut this out and then she proceeded to say the most fucked up shit like <laughs> like it was there was a study that was done yeah was it funded by the fucking kkk and i'm gonna say something nobody else wants to say okay if she wanted to talk about how her cooch is so tight she should have been like my cooch is so tight because my boyfriend is so tiny do you notice how she had to do it by bringing not just another girl down by a whole race group down Bitch, what the fuck is wrong with you? You are so embarrassing. I want to treat this comment with, with kindness and have um, a healthy, productive conversation around it. There are good non-racist East Asian women, just like there are bad racist East Asian women. So it's not about like absolutes or like, oh, the majority of us, like... There are good people and bad people in every group, okay? But for those of us that are racist, that are anti-black, anti-any-other minority, I guarantee you it comes from internalized colorism that we face within our own community. For example, you know, this is my grandfather. That's how Korean men looked two generations ago you don't really see that anymore especially like in our homeland i i don't want to dissect it too much like me i just wear like spf 80 because i just don't want to age but like my brother is a darker asian yes like he's korean but like we don't care we're americanized korea as 
a society has a lot of catching up to do, especially with stuff like that. And, um, you know, like feminism, you know, gay rights and stuff like that. I just want to say, I want to acknowledge that it exists, but it's not all of us, okay? Just like in every group. There are so many of us that have been victimized by our own society. And oftentimes, you know, especially when we immigrate to different countries like the United States, it really, it really opens our eyes. And um, for the most part, we're all really good people. Um, they're, they're good East Asian people. I've had a few videos come up on my free page recently talking about Esther from UTI. Um, I took it, I couldn't remember it. Um, and I feel like people are like, oh, I've never heard that like stereotype she's making up. But I feel like she's reverse psychology -ing the one I've heard, which I've literally been told by like people, like even when I was a child, I heard this. It was like, that basically, like, they'll be like, oh, yeah, Asian men have small Ds, so Asian women have small... And it's so, like, really weird and, like, definitely, like, not actually based in any scientific reality. And I feel like she would, Esther just, like, reverse psychology this and applied it to black women, which she has no business doing. But this is why I feel like I made a video a while back that I was talking about racial picnic pick me's and people didn't really get what I was talking about but I feel like they're really dangerous because they will use stereotypes about their race to try to make themselves look better and more appealing while like we like enforcing the harmful aspects of those stereotypes against other people and even against their own people and this is why I think it's really important to remember that even if a stereotype seems good on the surface it's still not one you really want to embrace because it's often used to weaponize against other people. Like for instance, the whole model minority myth towards Asian Americans, um, which even if you look at that dis disaggregated data, you see that most Asian Americans are not like doing above white people. It's like Chinese and Indians, which has to do with the way the government allows those immigrants to come in with the Heart Seller Act. Only um, people with like qualified jobs like um high skill uh, education were allowed to actually immigrate to this country and become citizens and with the indian government they only allowed people to leave india if they had really high education because they wanted to make sure that the like global impression of india wasn't like of a poor worker but of like a high tech like industry kind of worker uh, like the very like educated computer science types and you see that with China as well as so the ones who can come immigrate nowadays are usually highly educated or skilled not like the poor laborers that used to come over in like the 1800s and that kind of shapes the model minority myth and um, everybody else is doing about on par with white people or you realize that a lot of Southeast Asians and Pacific Islanders are doing like way like in poverty and dropping out of high school and have high rates of um, being not that well off and it's completely missed because they look at the average of all Asian Americans including like South Asians, East Asians, Southeast Asians, Pacific Islanders. It's like a really big group of people and the people who do need help kind of get missed because they're just grouped in with the rest of everyone else. and. Then the whole model minority myth thing is used to basically shame black people and like, oh, why are you not doing as well as Asians? Because, you know, you're both minorities, but clearly the American dream can happen. Well, Asians mostly didn't come to this country, couldn't hold citizenship until like the 1900s. And even then, like, it wasn't until I believe like 1965 that there was changed, like, restrictions for immigration and before then it was like you couldn't immigrate if you couldn't speak english or pass like language exams or like they had so many laws excluding citizenship for non-white people not just with uh, even with like black people the uh, dred scott case like you couldn't be a citizen even if you were born in america as long if you were not white and we really forget that part of history so when you look at asians success it's mostly because they were already successful in their home country before they came here it's like they came from middle class backgrounds. They weren't the ones who were like refugees or in poverty for the most part. 
I didn't come across that well spoken in this video and like I don't have as many sources on hand because I'm just kind of like talking right now not based off of like researching something and trying to show about it but just like I'm so frustrated that there are still people in the Asian American community who like try to embrace certain stereotypes that literally come from the degradation of our people and like the whole like oh the Asians are more successful that was used to spread yellow peril feels fears that we we're gonna come take over America for with our cheap fast labor and the whole like hypersexualization of Asian women was used to like restrict our citizenship, immigration, um, justify crimes against women, like and it's just like they don't even see the way that like anti blackness affects us too. And it's just like even if you're not gonna be against like racism for the sake of moral reasons at least be against racism for the fact that it does not benefit you to side with the like white supremacy like i don't know it's maybe they just grew up and they're too too comfortable in their little bubble of like orange county like socal just asian but even then like a lot of civil rights movements came out of like, southern california like you'd think they would know that Hi, my name is Yana. I was raised by gynecologists and obstetricians um, since I was like eight years old. OK, my mom is really good at her job, whatever, um, and has taught me reproductive health since I was young. That being said, I have a lot of background knowledge when it comes to reproductive health and gynecology in general. Um, I am not in the human field. OK, I don't do human med, but I do know a lot about reproductive health and the issues that surround it, okay? Uh, I'm here to help educate people like Esther who don't know these things because quite literally, some people just really don't know these things because of education, of their location, like geog ge geographically. I don't know where Esther is originally from, but some school systems just don't teach you things and people will believe whatever they see on the internet. and. Unfortunately, like there's not much you can do about that except for educate people. And I would like to educate people because I love education. Anyways, um, reproductive health, right? So the problem is that most doctors actually still think that way. They think that way um, where they do say, oh, black women don't need much pain medication during labor because they have big hoo-hahs and they can easily pull out a baby. They, they don't need my help. They're going to help at the last fucking sec second. So that being said, the death rate of women in labor and X, Y, and Z, even with certain types of, um, I would say, STDs too, for black women is a lot higher than it is for non-black women. So white women, Latinos, etc. It's a lot higher for black women because a lot of people still believe in this one fucking doctor who they named the fucking uh what you might call it what is he called the the godfather of gynecology um his name was like uh james more marion james mariam sims okay this man was from alabama and he experimented on black women black women okay he experimented on them doing like c-sections and shit like that okay um from like the 18, 1845 to like 1880s and shit like that so a very very long time ago everything that we know about modern gynecology today we have to thank black women for because they did not consent to giving their lives their lives to this okay they lost their fucking lives because of a doctor just like this okay a doctor just like this basically experimenting on them with no anesthetics okay being like she has a big hoo-ha she can birth oh i'm gonna cut her open with no anesthesia because she doesn't feel pain these doctors literally thought that they don't feel pain and if you talk to modern black women today and you ask them what happened in the labor and delivery room you know they have horror stories of course they have horror stories because doctors don't listen to black women when it comes to pain tolerance and it's because of thoughts like that that women have big hoo-ha so she can birth easy or she black so she don't feel pain like us oh my god but get a woman of the caucus in there get a woman of the caucus in there
it's a different fucking story you know that black women die in labor 69.9 percent versus white women who die at 26.9 percent so this is per 100,000 people so take that number that is 2.6 times higher black women die 2.6 times higher at a rate than white women do during labor and post labor too because hemorrhaging happens and a lot of people don't don't think about hemorrhaging post labor anyways those are my fun facts um think of black women today for modern gynecology oh and thank puerto rican women who gave you modern birth control because we all fucked them up we all fucked them up america um yeah for birth control and now a lot of women have generational issues in puerto rico the women of puerto rico have a lot of generational issues with their endocrine system because of the experimental birth control so go think a woman today esther from uci hi okay i've heard a lot of people like commenting about how what you said was really messed up but what i haven't heard someone come out and say is that is definitely not true that's not how the female anatomy works at all female anatomy is very different from male anatomy our anatomy is meant for it to go back to its original shape after we have children da -da -da. but also black women aren't the only ones who's like african-american men aren't the only ones that are hung like a horse like native american men most indigenous people honestly like hawaiian samoan um like german men i feel like a lot of like european men are probably hung I don't know this all from experience, but I'm just saying that <laughs> there are a lot of men that are hung like a horse. Brazilian men that aren't... So, what you're saying, Esther, and also, I don't even know if that's true if all Asian men have tiny thingies. Like, I don't really feel like that's true. But what you're saying is that then all races besides Asian women would be naturally bigger. And that's just not true. It just depends on how many kegels you do. So, I just wanted to get clear because no one's, like, saying it. African-American women have big things because they don't think that you need to take away from podcasters just having a horrible week this week such as under the influence podcast and Brianna check and fry is that not everyone should have a podcast or access to a mic I promise you not all of you are that funny not all of you are that bright to be having certain types of conversations most of the things that you and your friends find funny are in fact misogynistic racist ableist and victim blaming nobody wants to hear it keep it to yourself as I said in my previous video not everything should have a take on it and I'm going to add on it not everybody should be a podcaster because again you are not that funny like mm -mm, sorry not, well not really as the Spanish saying goes por la boca muere el pez if they had just both of these parties had just kept mm, mums the word they would not be having the issues that they are having right now but you know the silver lining to all of this is that now we know how these people are and can just actively not engage with their content anymore so moral of the story go to your amazon cart take the mic take the cameras all of the podcast equipment that you have in there and just don't buy it let it rock let it be it wasn't meant to be if there's anything that you need to take away from podcasters just having a horrible week this week such as under the influence podcast and brianna check and fry like seriously lovely so for the sake of people that have not been following this you know extra under the influence situation it's all about um i think she is you know she's one of these postcasters and all of that which she was invited and all of a sudden she started talking or saying things about people that looks like me like black women and uh, this Esther went ahead to compare the flowers of you know black men and um, black women and asian women which she described that the reason why like she like you know black men like i don't even really want to go into that all that that because i even feel some type of women saying you know stuff like this she was like black men blah 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 is big black women blah 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 is small is big and uh, asian women <laughs> oh my gosh and this got a lot of women reacting especially you know people that look like me and they were like why all of this comparison if it does not have 
anything to do with reances, if it does not have anything to do with entire blackness, you know, these people will just sit down, like they will just be on their own. These black women that is being the order of the day, that is being called out each and every person day. And I keep on asking myself, even if she want to make an example, why must it be black women? There are other races that she can actually make her examples with. Why must they use, you know, and she knows that black women have been socialized and all of that, and she just wants to, like, you know, they have other races. They have other women you can do your comparison with. Why always these people that are just here, minding their business, doing their thing, focusing on building themselves, because they are so tired of being called out by any Jack and John. They are called out by bank colored women, called out by Hispanic women, called by, out by Indian women, called out by, you know, they are even trending for being the savior of the whole universe. Like, when I say that, I mean, the man that actually came out to talk about how his mother told him that if he ever does see himself or find himself in his trouble or some type of you know scenario that he needs help he just have to call upon a black woman and all of the problems will go away why these women that is always on their own if beauty influencers will call them out another person will call them out they are even still be called out by their own men like so instead of her to do her broadcast in peace she decided that she was going to bring in black women and try to do her, her comparison. If black women is not compared with black pan colored women, but be compared with Asian American, like, leave these women alone now. <laughs> like, what is this? Leave them alone. And as if this does not have to do with, you know, genetics. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> There is a lady that was like, oh, okay, maybe because she's, you know, they say that black women are well built, you know, in terms of everything, you know, you know how in like black women are. So automatically they, they just assume that the way at which everywhere is. <laughs> oh gosh. Ah, oh my goodness, black woman apps. Being a black woman, you need, you need to wear a life jacket. You need to wear a life jacket just for being a black woman because where at which they will drag you eh you need something very strong so that if you've been dragged you won't be able to fall off and they will be able to pull you down ah seriously you know sometimes when i see something like this i keep asking myself oh my god why is it but sometimes i just realize that i think it's just because they do not okay black women are just it they're the ultimate so if you're the ultimate a lot of people would just want to like try to look for a way to push you down pull you down trying to you know oh my goodness this is just so ridiculous and the good thing about this whole you know controversy is the fact that a lot of asian women decided to come out to debunk this if this is just done continuously. I think the world might actually be a better place. You know, I like the fact that anytime things like this happen, the people of that community are like hearing from their own side. Let me see if all of them actually have this mindset. But I think a lot of them does not even think like this. A lot of them are very sensible, reasonable. But it's just that many of them who are just like... I don't know what black women have done. I really, really done to these people, you know. But this is the same people that, in times of 
problems and times are coming out use our biases they are going to be the first people to come out to do this but when it's time for this said black human to be lifted up every other person will look for a way to drag her down to drag her to the mud to make her feel you know so less of herself even if they know deep inside of them that these women are of you know like the motherland they are the mother the mother is the mother of all the mother of the universe seriously enough of this already and i like the fact that majority of the asian women came out to actually educate their sister because i think she need more of this education from her own people if it takes her own people to get her to understand that all these things that she was just peeling is just shows how ignorant she is i think that maybe she might learn she might have a corruption a, a correction but this is just so normal she's not the first person and she's not even going to be the last person they are very so quick to come out say stuff like this and before you know it apology video will appear but before they do or say something like this, they will not think about the consequences. Just, just, just want to say it and uh, await the consequences. And when it appears, um, that's when you start hearing, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. This, you guys don't understand it. It is not the way you guys see. <laughs> like seriously. Like seriously, love it. It's so, so disappointing that at this stage and at this period in life, people are still thinking this way they're still with this their comparison I, I was even thinking it's you know pink colored women that does this lot of comparison and all of that the other time a pink colored woman was, was talking about how she's not in competition with the same black women because she's married to you know a black dude uh, she went ahead to talk about how black women you know live their life and how on on um, um, family oriented people they are they are they are not family structured people and all of that. like everybody have ev everything to say about people that looks like me anyway lovelies why not just leave me your own thoughts in the comment section of what you think of this video please do not forget that we do not support any form of bullying and harassment we're just here for education or any informative purposes and please, if you've not subscribed to this channel, please do your girl a huge favor to click on the subscription button, like this video, and I will see you lovelies when I upload. And thank video. you so much for all the love and support. Why not just leave me your own thoughts in the comment section of what you think of this video? And please do not forget that we do not support any form of bullying and harassment. We just have to educate and you know inform ourselves. All right, lovelies, please share this video, subscribe, and I will see you lovelies when I upload the next one.